Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome to the series where I teach you how to analyze and visualize data in Python. Over the next 16 videos, I'll be showing you how to use notebooks, how to load and save data frames, how to graph and visualize your data using Matplotlib and Seaborn, and also a little bit of extra stuff, so how to do uh, certain types of regression, how to do clustering, extra stuff like that. Now normally when I do a series on this channel it works fine on both Windows and Linux, however this time that may or may not be the case. There is some weirdness with some of the libraries in the way that Windows kind of handles C binaries, so for example NumPy 1.19.4 just doesn't work on Windows at all, or newer versions of Windows 10. That issue has been fixed but there's nothing to say that that issue isn't going to resurface at some point. There is also an extra step on Windows when it comes to the setup and that is downloading and installing the Microsoft C++ build tools. Now to do this is simple enough, all you have to do is just Google it and you should be able to download an installer and then that should walk you through everything you need to do. I believe it's just the Visual Studio installer um, it all comes with, but you don't have to do that on Linux or Mac OS at all, it just works out the box. And for that reason and for the other reason I said before with the NumPy weirdness, I would recommend, if at all possible, that you use Windows or Mac OS when following this series. Now once you've got all the setup working and once you've got libraries that are actually compatible, which everything should be, as far as I'm aware, as of current, all the code should work fine on Windows. But for the reasons of the setup, that's why I'm kind of suggesting you don't use it if you have the choice. Of course, if you don't have a choice and you need to use Windows, then there will be support if you can't get the build tools installed for whatever reason. I didn't actually go through that when I'm talking about all the installations because I'm on Linux, I'm doing this on Linux. Um, so I didn't need to do that. But with that out of the way, we can get on with the rest of the video. Of course, if you find it helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know and subscribing so you don't miss out on new videos in the series. But yeah, I'm gonna switch over to the computer now and walk you through the rest of the setup. Okay, so here we are on my appropriately colored desktop. <laughs> I found a wallpaper in Pop! OS with Cabra color, so I thought, screw it, I'll use it. Uh, but we do have quite a lot to get through in this. I do want to quickly go over the basics like I always do, but I do want to talk about some of the more, more complicated or bespoke setup stuff as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at Python. I would presume you have this already, but if you don't, come to python.org, hit the downloads button, and then hit download Python 3.9.4 is the latest version. I'm using uh, 0 0.2 or 3.9.2, I should specify. Uh, I didn't know this version was out and I didn't have time to update it, so whatever. There's not gonna be much of a difference, so it's fine. Uh, this should work on anything above 3.7.1. Uh, there is a pandas dependency for 3.7.1, so it's not gonna work on anything less than that. So you need to keep that in mind when selecting what Python version you wanna use. Um, and the next thing we need to set up is our notebook environment or ID. Now I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. VS Code has support for, uh, for Jupyter Notebooks in built. However, there is an online one as well. So I th I, I'm not sure you need to download Python if you're using the online one. I could be wrong. You hit, try in your browser here, try the Jupyter Lab, not the classic notebook, because that didn't work when I tried to do it uh, just now. And it will launch the server and then you'll have an environment to, to play around in. Now this does take quite a long time, so I will cut to when the environment is is all like loaded up when there's an update. And we're in, there's quite a lot of screens it goes through, including a little pop-up asking if you want to clear the um, the workspace. I would suggest you do, I guess. I don't know, but you can hit this Python 3 button here and it will take you to a Python 3 notebook where you can print hello world and then do, is it control? I guess it's control. There we go. I've literally never used this before, so I'm, <laughs> I'm learning with you. There you go, so hello world. We're not gonna be using this though. We're instead going to be using uh, Visual Studio Code. If you don't have that already, it's actually code.visual studio, isn't it? And you can download it from here, uh, .com. Or if you're on a, if you're on a Ubuntu or I think most Linux distros have this, you can get it from the apt repository. So you can do, uh, I'm just going to type in here, uh, sudo apt install dash y code and it'll install it for you. Or yum or whatever your package manager is. I don't know. I don't cater to every version of Linux because <laughs> that's not possible. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much all of that I wanted to show off. So the next thing I want to mention is the GitHub repository for the series. Now I wouldn't normally talk about this in the video. I normally just kind of leave it in the description for people to find should they happen across it. But there is a special difference to this that I want to show off. So I'm actually just going to get to it from here. Uh, there will be a link in the description that you can use. Um, but it's this one here. Uh, so this is what it looks like at the moment, obviously there's no code in here at the moment, but the reason I wanted to show you this is because the data sets. 
So these are my own data sets that I pulled from my own YouTube analytics. As you can see, they're a little bit out of date, but we're using them anyway because they're for example purposes. Uh, so essentially, you can use your own data sets if you want. I would perhaps recommend you do. However, if you're really new to this and you know you want to make sure that everything is exactly the same, then you can go and you can get these. And what these are are my YouTube analytics. So this one is every single available metric you can get for every day in 2020. Um, so there's quite a lot of data here and you could just download this and read it in and it will do all the same as what I'm doing in the video. The reason I'm using my own data is because I didn't want to get involved with like distribution rights or whatever. I know there are a lot of open source databases out there or data sets out there, sorry. But I didn't want to risk licenses changing you know, copyrights being added and uh, this, that, and the other. I didn't want to mess with all that. So this is my own data that I know for a fact that I can distribute and you can use if you want to. Um, so they're all here. There will be more added. Uh, these aren't all the ones we're using. I've just kind of posted the ones that we are going to be using for the time being. So the next thing to tackle is going over the stuff in the IDE, going over the setup of everything. So I have my tutorial folder and my datasets folder. Obviously the datasets folder is what I just showed you. The tutorial folder is where all the notebooks are gonna go. So this is where all the uh, IPYNB or IPYNB or IPython notebooks are gonna go. That's the type of file we're gonna be using. We're not gonna be working in .pys for this series. You don't need to worry about any of these or this. This is just for the repo and for my workflow and everything. So you just need to worry about these two folders here. And the next thing is the pip installs. So the libraries we actually need to install. Now the GitHub repository is actually quite useful for this because there are quite a lot of installs we need to make. Uh, there is a command down here. This is actually outdated. I really need to push um, the updated version of this. Uh, but as you can see, we have obviously Python. We have pandas to create our data frames. We have Seaborn as our graphing library. It sits on top of matplotlib, but I'll talk about that later. We have scikit-learn for very specific stuff. OpenPyXL is just a helper for pandas. The IPy kernel controls the IPython notebooks and stuff. And then we have analytics down here, which we're not actually going to be using in this series. However, I use that library to get all of the data, uh, all of the data sets in here. Uh, I have a video of that already uploaded. You can see it in the cards in the top right. If it's not there, then let me know. Um, but you can learn how to use that there if you want to use your own channel's data, for example. Uh, these versions are a bit out of date. I actually need to um, update those to the actual ones. But we are just going to copy paste this uh, here because there is quite a lot of stuff to install. Uh, so as you can see, Python, Seaborn, uh, Scikit-Learn, OpenPyXL, IPy, Kernel, and Analytics. So on uh, Windows, you may need to do py-3.9-m pip install, Linux, Mac OS, Python 3.9-m pip install. I'm in a virtual environment, so this will just work. We install that, and then we can actually end this video. Quite a lot to talk about, quite a lot of setup. Um, this install... Uh, does take quite a while. Just look at the number of dependencies that are needed for, for all this stuff. Half of those are analytics as well because of all the Google stuff. So many dependencies if you do anything to do with the Google API. It's really annoying. Um, yeah, there's like all different setups and stuff that need to be done when they eventually want to actually run. There we go. That's the ETXML file one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to mention or talk about in this video. If you have any questions, don't be scared to leave a comment or ask in the Discord server, which you can find in the description below. But yeah, with that, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons for being as awesome as they are. And I'll see you next time where I teach you the basics of how notebooks work, how to create them, how to save them, how to do the very basic stuff in them. Uh, so I'll see you for that.